The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And the king said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's readings provide us an excellent transition from the Old Covenant to the New. And it's really prepared for by the prophets. So in this case, the first reading from Ezekiel, chapter 36, where he predicts that there will come a time when God will take his people and gather them from all the countries and bring them home. He says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. That's a reference to baptism, the baptism that Jesus was inaugurating in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. It goes on to say, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. That's one of the effects of baptism. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us, and because of God's sanctifying grace acting in our soul, we are transformed from the inside. We are made New, we're born again, able to live a holy life, not by our own strength, but by that transformation that God initiates. I will put my spirit within you, it says, and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. That announcement by the prophets is now told to us in a different way by Jesus himself, who is the bridegroom and has come to marry his church, the bride. He tells it in the form of a parable in Matthew chapter 22. He says, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. The king in this case is God the Father. The son whose banquet is being prepared is Jesus Christ, and the banquet is nothing less than a wedding banquet. We are the bride being invited day by day. In the gospel parable, the servants who were sent out to invite everyone to the wedding banquet were the Old Testament prophets who initially invited only Israel. But the response was lacking, basically ignored. While the king is not happy, he says, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. The wedding banquet here is the messianic feast that again was prophesied this time by Isaiah in chapter 25, where he will gather people from all corners to his holy mountain. There will be a feast of rich foods and fine wines. Every tear will be wiped away. And they will say, this is who we were hoping for because all sins are wiped away as well. But again, the invitation is ignored. 
not only made light of, but some seized the slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. It says the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. That's a reference to the result of that refusal, because during the time of Jesus, we know within a generation, there was so much dissension among the Jewish leaders that the Roman Empire simply wiped them out, destroyed their city and their temple in 70 AD, and that is being prophesied here by Jesus himself. The parable goes on to say that the king again sends out his slaves, this time to invite everyone, good or bad. And that's a reference to the apostles inviting the Gentiles to come to the wedding banquet. Now, the reference there to the one person that the king sees at the wedding banquet who does not have a wedding robe might seem harsh because he's thrown out. But that robe is a baptismal robe. And although the person who did not have it on may object, I didn't have enough money to pay for that. In fact, at that time, when the king threw a banquet for his son, he would provide the robes so that everyone could be properly dressed. But this particular person invited deliberately did not put it on. And that's again a reference to this new life in Christ through baptism. It's the robe of righteousness, acts of charity, righteous deeds, because God has helped us to actually act them out. So this is still ongoing, this whole wedding feast invitation. We are here. This is the wedding feast. Let us rejoice that God in his grace has allowed us to be here. And let us receive our bridegroom gratefully. Continue to wear that robe of righteousness and then invite everyone to the feast. Even take them by the hand, help them put on that wedding garment, and let's all rejoice together.